Welcome to the Weekly Report for Monday, January 6th. I'm Liz Snyder. Here's a brief look at the news. Kenosha woke up to a dangerous cold spell today with temperatures that dipped below zero late Sunday and kept dropping all the way to minus 14 by late morning. Schools are closed throughout the county and more closures are possible Tuesday as the extreme cold is expected to continue into Wednesday. For the latest closure information, check KenoshaNews.com. How cold was it this morning? Janine Anderson filed this report. We just tried to use hot water to make snow here outside the Kenosha News and the very cold temperatures we have on Monday morning. We got a lot of steam, but I'm not sure we actually made the snow. Either way, it's very cold outside, so make sure if you do need to go out, you take precautions for yourself, your children, your pets, um, and help out others you might think are struggling with it. Uh, give someone a jump if they need it or any other way you can maybe help. It's a, it's a cold one and it's going to stay that way for at least another couple days. Stay warm, Kenosha. This is Janine Anderson for the Kenosha News. Thanks, Janine. It's too cold for ice skating today, and that may be just as well. The ice rink that the city debuted at the Washington Park Municipal Golf Course two winters ago is no longer in operation. Mayor Keith Bosman said a lack of use of the free facility drove the decision not to open it this year. Bosman said he would like to open a rink elsewhere sometime in the future, perhaps in the place to do way in Harbor Park. With the 2014 Olympics only a month away, members of the Racine Curling Club showcased another ice sport on Saturday. The club, the only one of its kind in the area, held an open house to expose the game to newcomers from the Racine, Kenosha, and Milwaukee areas. Club members said interest in the sport has grown since NBC began televising Olympic curling matches. The Racine Club has play every day of the week, including adult and junior leagues. For more information, go to RacineCurlingClub.com. A doubleheader against Truman State brought mixed results for the Parkside men's and women's basketball teams on Sunday. Andrew Horshack and Jeremy Reeves have the story. The UW Parkside men's basketball team improved to 2-0 in the Great Lakes Valley Conference with a dominating 78-57 victory over visiting Truman State on Sunday. Jimmy Gavin came off the bench to score 22 points on the strength of six three-pointers, and Ziggy Ryuka, seen blocking a shot at the end of this clip, had a double-double with 17 points and 12 rebounds. The Rangers, who shot 55% from the floor in the game, led by at least 20 points for the final 11 and a half minutes. Andrew Horshack, Kenosha News. UW Parkside's Maddie Johnston takes a pass from number 12 Tara Napstein and hits a turnaround jumper in the post. Later, Amber Bullock drives in for a layup. Parkside led by seven three times in the second half before Truman State rallied late for a 74-68 victory in a Great Lakes Valley Conference game Sunday afternoon at DeSimone Gymnasium. The Rangers' third straight loss dropped them to 4-6 overall and 0-2 in the GLVC. Jeremy Reeves, Kenosha News. What's trending today? Do you know anyone who has to brave the cold and work outside today? What are they doing? Tell us on our Facebook page. Up next is Dave Marin with the Athletic Republic Athlete of the Week. A rosy showing. I'm Kenosha News Sports Editor David Marin with the Kenosha News Athletic Republic Athlete of the Week. Harborside graduate Trey Waynes, number 15, played a big part in Michigan State's 24-20 win over Stanford in Wednesday's Rose Bowl. The redshirt sophomore, who played at Bradford, started at cornerback and collected an interception, his third of the season, as the Spartans won the granddaddy of all bowl games for the first time in 26 years. Waynes also had three tackles as the Big Ten champion Michigan State Spartans finished 13-1. Congratulations, Trey, the Kenosha News Athletic Republic Athlete of the Week. Thanks, Dave. Now here's a look at what we're working on today. Terry Flores has a story on a Kenosha Unified Student Mentoring Program, and Heather Poynier is working on a feature about a mechanic who brings his shop to his customers. Pick up a copy of the Kenosha News and check kenoshanews.com for all the details on these stories and more. I'm Liz Snyder with the Weekday Report.